Well, good morning. It's mighty early this morning. We had a very rainy night last night. Going to uh, get in chapter 19 of the book of Isaiah. And I uh, found a lot of likenesses and interesting things within, these, uh, within this chapter. And it reads... The burden of Egypt, and I believe that is the fourth burden uh, that um, Bullinger points out, out of seven in this uh, book. The burden of Egypt, behold the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud, and shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. To me, Egypt has always represented carnality um, as a Israel, a, a spiritual state of people that are seeking God, is held captive to it as we are held captive to uh, carnality. It's a never-ending relationship until we finally make that exodus and um, make an escape through Jesus Christ in our time. But this was a precursor to, uh, to the time of Jesus uh, to shape our hearts and minds, get ready to receive it. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. Um, when I read this, and they shall fight every one against his brother and every one against his neighbor. Uh, if you've ever been on the internet long trying to seek uh, a better understanding of Christianity and God and what things may mean or not mean, you will find that you will soon be embroiled in argumentation and uh, one-upmanship and all kinds of uh, chaos. And uh, this is where I see uh, this scripture comes to play in our time. Uh, I see a city against city and kingdom against kingdom. This could be look at uh, different views between different religions, uh, uh, how we love to fight and bicker against ourselves. This is all due to the carnal. Uh, who does he, God do this to? It's the Egyptians. This is people that's carnal-minded. Most people that's come to the revelation of Jesus Christ I will never waste time fighting and creating negative energy and arguing with others about Scripture. Only try to get our what we're receiving from the Holy Spirit and see if that catches fire to another uh, spirit that God may touch through uh, something that we may be experiencing and we look for the same thing in other people. There's no argument in uh, when you're in that... Uh, um, a spiritual state of being. Uh, argument is born from the carnal. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek the idols and the uh, charmers and to them that have familiar spirits and the wizards. This is a all this can be found on the internet today <clears throat> and in our society today. The wizards, people like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, the billionaires club, I always find myself quoting these days, is uh, the wizards of our time. And they create a program or an idea of something that plugs into the internet. Next thing you know, we're all living in that, like Facebook or YouTube or or what have you. So we're going to be looking. The carnal world is going to so be looking in these uh, realms, and these mediums. Uh, it was a word that uh, uh, the uh, Living Bible paraphrase used. Uh, and the Egyptians will give over unto the hand of a cruel lord. And a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord. Of Lord of Hosts, I write in my notes a cruel. Uh, this cruel equals a carnal uh, concept of God. Uh, if you ever 
uh, realize that it's your concept of God that is wrong. God is never wrong. God can only be right. But when we think sometimes we're reading these uh, Bibles and scriptures that we might say, gee, God sure was hard on those people, wiping out everybody, even the ones that piss us against the wall and the children, the animals and everything. And we'll, and we'll say to ourselves in our carnal mind, boy, God seems like a hard butt, doesn't he? I don't understand this. Well, we just have to put that on a shelf because God's not really talking about people as much as he's talking about ideas and ways of thinking and ways of being. But until we come to that understanding through the revelation of Jesus Christ, uh, <clears throat> it's a cruel God we serve because this is our concept and that concept is born out of carnal thinking. We must do away with the carnal way of thinking about God and do in with uh, the spiritual way of thinking of God. Think of God in our hearts, not with our minds. Common sense will fail us as common sense is the thing of this common world. But it's the uh, spiritual, the spiritual way of being will never fail us because it is of a spiritual plane. And the water shall fail from the sea. And the rivers shall be wasted and dried up. Now, these rivers can be thought of in the uh, spiritual sense as the, the, water, the rivers that flew into the Garden of Eden. The place where everything was perfect with God until we threw it away. Uh, a river is something that carries waters. And I think of the living waters that is Jesus Christ. That once we drink of them, we need not drink of any other water again. Uh, these waters dry up in carnality. They're lost. And they shall turn the rivers far away. This is the avenue that takes us to the Garden of Eden. It takes us to God. When those rivers dry up spiritually, uh, there's no traveling uh, to that Garden of Eden. And the brooks in uh, defense shall be uh, emptied and dried up. Uh, the reeds and flags shall wither away. Uh, the paper reeds by the brooks, by the mouth of the brooks, and everything sown uh, by the brooks shall wither and be driven away and be no more. This is where a carnal world leads us to. And the fishers also shall mourn, and, and they that cast angle into the brooks shall lament. They that spread nets upon the waters shall languish. When I read this, I made an immediate connection between Jesus wanting us to be fishers of men. Uh, we can cast out a net. Uh, it even mentions that as networks. Today we're on a network. You're looking at this right now through a YouTube network. This is one Christian trying to reach other Christians trying to share what God has shared with him. And this is the same thing that most all of you do as well, not only on the Internet, but through the water cooler at work, the truck you're riding with somebody to work with, or whatever friends you may be talking to about Christian things. You know, we all cast nets. We're all, whether we're catching by hook, which is one fish at a time, or by net, which is hundreds of fish at a time, you know, we'll mourn. When they're living in the world of carnality, and we're confounded by our carnality. It's hard to, to do any work with uh, fishing uh, in the, the, carnal, uh, the carnal waters. Moreover, they that work in fine flax, and they that weave networks, shall be confounded. Brother, you said it. And they shall be broken in the purposes thereof, all that make uh, sluices and ponds for fish. When I read that, I thought of little small churches and study groups. How uh, we're separated always by the carnal way that we read the Bible and understand it with our brains. Uh, separated from the reading the Bible with our hearts and seeing the deeper meanings. I was reminded of this by a gentleman I met online the other day. Um, about the things that we see, uh, how they're, uh, it was concerning the locust and the wild honey that John the Baptist, who is one who cries out from the wilderness as we do today, um, 
and how he eats uh, locust and wild honey. That never made sense to me until I saw this gentleman kick around some the can of thought on some ideas of what this meant to him. And it culminated ideas in my own self. I can see that now the locusts we're talking about is the carnal thoughts and ideas and teachings and preachings of carnal men. we got to eat those locusts as we are to eat the body of Christ by the wafer of bread. And it is through that we gain the body of the bread of Jesus Christ. We gain the understanding of what Jesus is trying to tell us. There's going to be a lot of people that tells us a lot of wrong things for us to gain a right thing out of it. And uh, that all started making perfect sense to me. And that wild honey, is uh, I'm still working on that, but I'm getting a sense from something this gentleman told me that it had to do with uh, the Word of God and the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, how it sweetens up. And um, it can take a bad thing and make a bad thing taste better. You can uh, add a... A spoon of honey to some nasty medicine and it goes down easier and it converts it into something that is more palatable. Surely the princes of Zoan, uh, pay note how close that sounds to Zion. Uh, Zoan here is the beginning of the Exodus. It is the place where the Exodus began. I had to go to a uh, strong uh, uh, study in, uh, in uh, uh, Matthew Henry, or no, it was actually... Uh, uh, this guy here, Zoan, it was a uh, Bullinger, who, uh, in, I think in chapter 30, has a note on that and nails this down to the beginning of the Exodus. <clears throat> Surely the princes of Zoan are fools, and boy, we are certainly fools when we are beginning the Exodus. We're not, we're not formed yet. We're still fight against God the whole trip. We gripe about the quail. We gripe about the manna. We gripe when we're just constant. Uh, revolting. I see fools. The counsels of the wise counselors of Pharaoh is become brutish. How say uh, ye unto Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise, the son of the ancient kings. Well, where are they? Where are the wise men? And let them tell thee now and let them know what the Lord of hosts hath proposed upon Egypt. Uh, the princes of Zoan are become fools. And when I see the princes of Zoan, this is a, this is probably 99% of us that get online here and try to share things. If we all go through a state uh, where we're the princes of Zoan, of confusion, of destruction, and we're teaching and preaching things we don't understand, we'll just have to bear that in. Because like anything else, we're being formed, we're being purified. And uh, I never really like to delete any of my old videos, and I'm sure it might sound very foolish in, but I think it's important that they stay. I got a discussion board I've been talking on for I don't know how many years, 15 years or so, called the God Zone. That, that, uh, I made it a rule years ago to never delete anything that happened on that board, whether it be arguments uh, there were many horrible things that happened on that discussion board, and they still stand to this day because I was moved by the Spirit to know that that needs to stand as witness. It probably stands as witness as what we're receiving right here today, that there we are, the Zoan uh, uh, princes at times, and we are all in this work of being uh, hammered and beaten into something better than we started out in. This is the purpose of this life, is it not? They have also succeeded, um, seduced Egypt, even they that are the stay of the tribes thereof. The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his uh, vomit. Uh, we can see a drunken uh, People drunken on uh, plastic churchism or uh, that cruel Lord that uh, God is saying he's going to give these people to. Um, uh, this is like a drunk man, drunken on false teachings, drunken on uh, words of men out of their mouths instead of uh, using this word of God as an anchor. Always a dangerous thing. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or tail, branch or rush, 
may do, and you may notice in my notes, I did the thing of this, the head biting the tail, which has always intrigued me from ancient times. Uh, I'm not sure what that means, but it, I felt compelled to bring that to my mind, uh, reading that. And that day Egypt shall be like the, uh, let me see where I'm at. Okay, in that day Egypt uh, be like unto, uh, in that day shall Egypt be like unto a woman. And it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shaketh over it. Um, this is carniality at some point. We get close to that deathbed or we get the long face from the doctor. And that's the hand of God shaken. And we start to let go of that thing we hung on to all our lives so hard toward that carniality. Uh, we start to think spiritual really quick. Not to say this pertains to just our death. I think it pertains to prior to the revelation of Jesus Christ, the last book on the New Testament, the new tit of which this book we all feed from. And the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt, and every one that maketh uh, mention thereof shall be afraid of himself because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he hath determined against it. Uh, someday we're going to realize that we are, uh, we are in Egypt, and we're playing the part of the ones that were the, the slave masters and not playing the part of Israel. You know, it's, a, it's a frightening thing. And that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the languages of Canaan, of Canaan, and uh, um, uh, the Life Study Bible over there refers to this as the language of um, Israel. Uh, though it's uh, not the native language, uh, Israel later moved into Canaan, I thought, when I read that. And swear unto the Lord of hosts, one shall be called the city of destruction. In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord. Uh, we were in a, Lord, uh, a hard place until this altar of the Lord was built in the midst of the land of Egypt. This is the carnal mind. Think of Golgotha, that uh, the place of the skull where Christ was crucified. The land of Egypt and a pillar under the border thereof to the Lord. And it shall be for a sign. What is the cross if not for a sign? And for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt, carnality. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors. And he shall send them a savior to that cross we're talking about, that savior. Because this is where the finished work happens. This is where everything turns around. And a great one. And he shall deliver them. Who is your deliverer? Who is the one who delivers us from our sin, from our carnal hearts and minds? If we accept Jesus Christ, especially when we get to the revelation of Jesus Christ, when we learn what that book is truly about, it's not about wars and carnal wars and carnal endings of the world. It's about the ending of carnality. Deliver them, and the Lord shall be known to Egypt and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day. That day is coming that every head will bow and every knee will bend and shall do sacrifice and uh, oblation. And I'm following my notes up there. That's what we're doing uh, now, reading the Bible. This is how we make our sacrifice and our oblations. This is how we, this is how we come to that place, to that state, this is how we catch fire and all of our impurities are burnt away. Uh, we read this Bible daily. Uh, this, is what, uh, this is what turns this thing around. Yea, uh, and they shall vow a vow unto the Lord and perform it. Uh, this is why I say daily study. Uh, I make uh, several vows in my uh, young life. And when you make a vow to the Lord, man, you better keep it. And the Lord shall smite Egypt. There's that carnal way of thinking. He shall smite and heal it. That carnal way of thinking is going to be healed. So now when you're in the carnal world, you don't seem to argue all the time with fellow Christians. You don't seem to have 
all these headaches and problems. You don't seem to slip off to the whorehouse when you're supposed to be going across town to pick up materials for your job because God has smited that Egypt way of thinking, that carnal way of thinking, and he is giving you a healing. And they shall return even unto the Lord, and he shall be entreated of them and shall heal them. The revelation of Jesus Christ is what that means to me. And in that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria. And the Assyrian shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptian unto Assyria. And the Egyptians shall serve the Assyrians. And in that day shall Israel be a third with Egypt, and the Assyrians uh, even a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Bless be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel mine inheritance. That's, uh, that's a lot of deep stuff for this morning. Grandchildren, if you're watching this study, boy, I tell you, I hope you're on your, hope you're on your toes in your studies. You know, there's a lot of this stuff I could grab onto, but there's a lot more that I can't grab onto, like the, the relationship between the Syrians and there and what they represent spiritually. But uh, that's an interesting uh, cud to chew on. Uh, with that being said, this uh, study was uh, pretty good. I think the Mars is a little short when looking by uh, Matthew Henry's notes. What a wonderful thing to uh, kick the can of thought around about what this means and to edify. I've been really enjoying uh, some of the comments coming in on the channel. Really thought-provoking uh, comments, and I think this is what we're supposed to do as, uh, as brothers, as opposed to the fighting brother upon brother as we do in Egypt, as we are before we're released from that captivity of the carnal uh, uh, chaos. Uh, what a wonderful thing to... Uh, talk with each other. Grandchildren, I love you. I hope that you're studying your Bibles. I hope that you're doing a morning read and a read at night when you go to sleep before you lay your head down. I hope you guys are being kind to each other. This is God's uh, greatest wish for us, is for us to be kind to each other and uh, to come out of this uh, captivity in Egypt that we find ourselves born into in this life. And the best way we can do that is with the, get on these teats. We've got a left teat, the Old Testament. We've got a right teat, the New Testament. We've got many helps from many people that came uh, before us to help us. And uh, yeah, these are the old uh, wise guys that, uh, that uh, we stand on the shoulders of them before us, all of us do. And what a great and wonderful uh, thing that is. We got a lot of storms last night. We'll have to go out and see if we got any damage. Had a few tornadoes not too far away. Uh, thank God that uh, they didn't hit our homes and our the homes of our children. I'm glad that uh, we got a call early this morning saying a tornado was very close to one of our kids' houses. And uh, thank the Lord, man, that uh, that the Lord's protected us and and uh, stayed us from uh, uh, these storms. These storms are getting crazy these days. We were talking about how these uh, wizards and everything that people are looking to. This is uh, you know, these wizards are planning what, what they used to call in the old days. I know I'm getting old and sidetracking, but uh, these wizards have been doing what they call uh, cloud seeding since the 50s, man, and fooling around with the weather by leaving those uh, contrails of airplanes that uh, we thought for years were just uh, a uh, a contrail was actually. Many planes are spraying uh, uh, chemicals up in the air, uh, barium and uh, aluminum powder and things, and changing, altering the weather. So here we enter a time, and I know they're probably just doing what they have to do for the plan to unfold, but the weather is starting to get rather crazy at times. What with the droughts and one year and the next year, rains and storms and it's, uh, the old man always said we were on a 20-year cycle, but I think now that we're hitting these 1,000-year floods and things, we can see that we're outside the parameter nowadays of the 20-year cycles that we used to have, that things are getting crazy. 
So, but hey, the garden's getting water. The garden's going to grow. We may not grow next year, but I know last year we couldn't get nothing hardly to come up. And uh, But uh, this year, man, everything is green and lush. So these rains are just as uh, they uh, can be a hurt. They're also a blessing. It's all in how you want to look at it. And I think this is the, one of the lessons that God is trying to teach us about uh, being an Egyptian or being an Israelite. It's all in how we want to look at it. Sometimes we play the part of both, don't we? So with that being said, I hope everybody has a great day. And uh, I'm going to go out there and take a look at the outside world and see what it looks like after that storm. So uh, I love you. And if there's anything that uh, you found interested in this reading, there'll be another reading, God willing, tomorrow. I'm, I'm really enjoying reading through these books. Uh, and uh, I always come back and see his grandkids. Uh, look us up. We're in the book. Praise God. We're in the book. Y'all have a wonderful day.